Let's do Rise to Care again, another Dreams official tutorial recording. This episode is about gameplay and connectors using strings, pistons and bulk. I know what you need for making some actual gameplay elements. This tutorial is all about connectors. Connectors join objects together in a way that lets them move. Like the hinge on a door or a ball on a string, for example. Just what we need to help Connie get to her pal Cuthbert. Ah, what would he do without her? First things first though. We need to be precise when using connectors. So let's turn on the grid snap guide. That way, everything will line up properly. So, go to the assembly menu, open the guide section, and select the grid icon with the X button. Now that grid snap is on, any objects you move and tools you use will snap in line with the grid in the scene. You can adjust how fine the grid is by using the plus and minus icons on the button. But for this tutorial, it's best if you leave the grid size at 1. Now, Connie, let's see how to sort Cuthbert out. The best way to find out what needs connecting is to play the scene and see for ourselves. But instead of switching over to play mode, we can test the scene in edit mode by clicking R3. Hmm, well, this is odd. The bridge has fallen down, but the second platform is still floating in place. How can one object float and another one fall? Click L3 to rewind the scene. Let's check the bridge's tweak menu. Remember that tweak menus let us see and edit the settings of things in edit mode. Hover your imp over the bridge, then hold L1 and press square to open its tweak menu. Tweak menus differ depending on what sort of object you're tweaking. The bridge is a sculpture. Sculptures are pretty complex things. Their tweak menus have lots of pages. To switch pages, Use your imp to select the different tabs at the top of the menu. Maybe we'll find something on the Physical Properties page that'll tell us why the bridge falls down. Its icon is a Newton's cradle, like one of those desk ornaments where the little metal balls bash into each other. Select it with X. This page contains the sculpture's physical properties and attributes. There's a lot of buttons and sliders here, but the one we're interested in is the top one. Aha, I thought so. Someone's gone and switched on the movable option. Okay, I admit it, it was me. Well, it wouldn't be much of an adventure if Connie could just stroll across the bridge, would it? Making the bridge or any sculpture movable means it becomes physical. That means that forces in the scene, like collisions, the imp, or in this case gravity, can move it. Luckily, we can stop it from falling down by adding a connector to it. Which is exactly what we'll do in the next step, once you're ready to move on. So, all we need to keep the bridge from falling is a piece of string. Not just any piece of string though, what we in the dream shaping business call a string connector. We'll need to attach the other end to something unmovable, like the blue cylinder above the bridge. Start by moving your imp with the left and right sticks until you can see the top of the bridge and the bottom of the blue cylinder. Make sure your scene is rewound. Click L3 if it isn't. Now open the assembly menu and select the three connected squares to open the gadgets menu. Look for the button with the joint icon, which will take you to the connectors submenu. You can move the menu with your imp by grabbing it with R2. Select the icon with the two circles connected by a wavy line. And you'll see the string connector appears on the tip of your imp. Now let's get connecting. You should always make the first connection to the object that won't move. We call this the parent object. In this case, it's this blue cylinder but it could be something else, like the frame of a door. See the yellow dot on the cylinder? 
I put that there to show the best place to make your connection. So hover over it, then press R2 or X to connect the string. The grid snap guide will help you line it up exactly with the yellow spot. When you move your imp now, you'll notice it's tethered to the cylinder and has a blue gizmo attached to it. Now let's stretch that string to the bridge, all the way down to the blue dot. The blue end of the connector joins to the movable object, which we call the child object. Hover over the blue dot. See how the grid snaps it in line. So let's connect the string there with R2 or X. If your bridge isn't in line, just make sure that your scene is rewound. Now that the blue gizmo is connected, you can press circle to unequip the string connector from your imp. And there you have it. The cylinder and the bridge are connected. Click R3 to play the scene and check that it's working. Well, it looks a bit wobbly, but nothing Connie can't handle. Switch over to play mode and have a go. Time to get Connie over to the third platform. The small pink platform and the blue step aren't much use to her right now. But if we make the platform move backwards and forwards, she can hop on it and cross over. To do that, we'll need a connector called a piston. Go to the assembly menu, then the gadgets menu. You'll find the piston in the connectors section. It's all the way over on the left and looks like, well, a piston. Now that it's equipped on your imp, you can start connecting. First, press R2 or X to join it to the blue step, which is the stationary parent object. I put a yellow dot on it to show you the best place to connect to it. Next, connect the blue end to the child object, the floating platform. See how grid snap keeps the joint perfectly straight. Hover over the blue dot, then press R2 or X. Remember, the child object is the part that needs to be able to move. So when you join a connector to its child object, that object will automatically become movable. When you've placed the piston, press circle to unequip the piston connector. Click R3 to test the connector. That's more like it. The piston is now moving the platform back and forth. Rewind the scene with L3. Connie might be a bit put out jumping on that. Let's calm the piston down a bit. We'll need to open the piston's tweak menu. So hover anywhere over it, hold L1 and press square. If the tweak menu blocks your view of the piston, you can grab it and move it with R2. OK, this white gizmo shows the maximum length and speed of the piston. You can change that speed by adjusting the slider with the clock icon. That shows you the cycles per minute. Grab the slider by holding X over it with your imp and reduce the value now. The further to the left you move, the faster the number will change. It doesn't need to be exact. Somewhere around 15 should do it. But if you want to get a more precise number, you can adjust the slider with the up and down directional buttons instead. Notice how it's slowed down now. Click R3 to see it moving the platform. When you're happy with the speed, close the tweak menu with the close button or use L1 and circle. Then rewind the scene with L3. Time to switch over to play mode and test out the scene so far. Make sure the platform isn't moving too fast for Connie to jump on. You can always go back to edit mode and tweak the piston until you're happy with it. All right, there's just one more gap for Connie to cross. And we have a plank and a step we can attach it to. For the plank to drop down, we'll need it to pivot like a hinge. 
which means we'll need to use a bolt connector this time. Go into the connectors section in the assembly menu and select the icon with the nut on it. That's the bolt connector. Now you can connect it just like you did with the string and the piston. And because I'm such a nice teacher, I've put some yellow and blue dots so you can see where to make the connections. They're quite close together this time, so better move in for a good view. Remember, you can use the grab cam, R1, to zoom in close. As always, connect the parent object first, the yellow dot. Then you can connect the child object with the blue dot. The grid snap guide will keep the bolt nice and straight, so you don't have to worry about that. Once it's all connected, you can unequip the bolt connector using the circle button. You've probably noticed there's a purple gizmo halfway along the bolt. That's the pivot around which the bolt will rotate. Click R3 and see how it's all working. Well, that's not right, is it? Looks like we need to reposition the pivot to get the plank moving how we want it. Click L3 to rewind the scene and reset the plank. Now go ahead and grab the purple gizmo with R2 and move it so it's lined up alongside the blue one. You can also rotate the pivot by grabbing it with L2. So try doing that now. Keep rotating until the shaft through it lines up straight with the blue gizmo. The grid snap guide will help you line it up exactly. Once it's all lined up, switch over to play mode to test it out. If you've done it correctly, the plank should balance upright. Connie will need to push the plank down, unless, of course, the plank isn't long enough. Oh well, switch back over to edit mode and rewind the scene. We'll sort out the plank in the next step. To make sure Connie can reach the last platform with the plank, we could always make it longer, but that's really a whole other tutorial. Instead, let's try just restricting the bolt's movement. We can do that by giving it an angle limit. You'll need to bring up the bolt's tweak menu. So hover over any part of the bolt, hold L1, then press square. You should see the Use Limits button about halfway down. Select it with X and... Look at that! Three handles have appeared. Two pale yellow ones and a longer pale blue one. The yellow ones set the range of movement, which is represented by the transparent arc between them. We need to move one of those yellow handles so that it's a little left of vertical. It should look like a leaven on a clock face. Now move the other yellow handle to the three o'clock position. If your handle doesn't line up exactly, just press triangle while you're grabbing it. This will realign the handle to the grid. The blue handle represents the position of the child object. So you need to line it up with the plank in the 12 o'clock position. Press triangle to realign the handle to the grid if necessary. You can close the tweak menu now, then head into play mode to test the scene. If everything's working as it should, Connie should be able to reach Cuthbert. And if you feel like experimenting, you can try out some other connector types. See what you can come up with.